Hey everybody, Lee Lowell here from smartoptionseller.com. How's everyone doing today? It is Saturday, October 2nd, 2021, moving on in this year. Hey, welcome to another edition of our Saturday YouTube options educational videos. If you've been with us for a while, you know that we like to give you some good free options trading information. We go over strategies, we go over concepts. So I'm here to help you become a better options trader. And this is what we do every Saturday. And so, as you can see on your screen, the topic for today is how are option prices determined? Now, we need to take a step back here because we usually, usually talk about an options trading strategy. A lot of times we talk about put option selling because that's what we do here at the Smart Option Seller. That's our bread and butter. But, but sometimes we need to go back to basics because we have, we have a lot of beginner uh, watchers here, people that watch these videos, and they don't really know a lot about options, so they're we're talking about these option strategies and they don't even know what an option is. So we need to step back every once in a while and, and talk about the basics and what options are and how option prices are determined. So that's what we'll talk about today. We'll go over the concepts of what, what goes into an option price, what helps set the option price and how does it change over time? So, you know, as we go down the list here, as you know, options contracts are just another form of investment. Okay, they can be used in lieu of stock trading. They can be used to take a bullish or bearish position. You can be an option buyer, an option seller. But regardless, an option contract has its own price, just like every stock has its own price. Every option contract has its own price as well. But option contracts are what we called derivative investments. And the reason why they're called derivative investments is because the options price is derived from other sources. Okay, an options price gets its value from other sources. Sorry about that. Had a little bit of a technical glitch there for a quick second. So moving on, we're talking about uh, options prices. And, and like I said, they're derived, the options price is derived from other factors. So let's go over what helps give an, give an options its value. Okay, when we talk about an options price, options value, options premium, they're all used interchangeably. Okay, an options price can also be called an options value, options premium. And in order to figure out what an options what an option contract is worth, you have to take what we call these six input prices. These six numbers right here all get put into a, a formula and then it spits out the options price. So in order to figure out what an option is worth at any moment in time, now yes, you have the options traders on the floors of the option exchangers. They're buying and selling, you know, got supply and demand for these things all day long. But the option price itself is, is made up of other factors, okay? And, and here's the six things right here that helps determine an options price. You got the current stock price, whatever stock that, that you're looking at, the strike price of the option, okay? Every option has a strike price. And that the strike price is basically where you can contract yourself out to buy or sell that specific option. Now, if the stock's at $100 a share, you can have $100 strike price, a $90 strike price, $110 strike price, $150 strike price, a $30 strike price. There's all these different strike prices, okay? If you look at an option chain, an option chain lists all the option contracts that are available for that specific stock. And there's many months, every option contract has an expiration date. So there's all these different expiration dates, one day out, one week out, one month out, one year out, two years out. So you have strike prices, expiration dates, all different numbers. But regardless, you have the current price of the stock, you have the strike price, you have any have how many days are left until the option expiration. You have volatility levels. Volatility is how has the stock been fluctuating? Has it been erratic or has it been smooth? Okay. So that is what's called the volatility of the stock. And and it and, and it's it's a number, it's an actual number that's get put it that gets put into the formula. And you have dividend and interest rates. So as I say up here, these first four uh, input numbers are the most important that affects an options price, options value, options premium, whatever you want to say. Dividend and interest rates play a very small um, part of giving an option its value. So we really don't concentrate too much on dividend and interest rates. It's these four main things right here. 
that help determine an options price. And you take these numbers, and these are all easily found, readily available anywhere on the internet, or where, if you if you have a you know a trading program, a trading platform, or through your broker, you can find these four. Uh, things right here and actually the volatility levels I'll show you a good way to do that but you you, you can easily figure out what the, the, the current stock price is you know what strike price you're looking at you know how many days until expiration are and you can find that as well and and I'll show you how to get a volatility level and these all these six things get put into an, an option pricing formula and one of the most popular is what's called the Black Scholes model. Black Scholes model is is uh, based off of two gentlemen, uh, Black and Scholes, two different guys. Those are those are their last names, and they created this option pricing formula to help determine an option's value. And you can use an option calculator that will help you figure out the options price. So you don't have to do the formula. It's a it's a crazy formula. We don't have to worry about that because the calculator does it all for us. So let's quickly go to a, an option calculator here. This is from one of my favorite websites, iVolatility.com. If you've been with us for a while, you know I talk about iVolatility.com quite a bit. So on their website, and this is free, a lot, all of this information that I show you is all free stuff. They, they have their basic calculator. That's all you need is your basic calculator. So go to iVolatility.com and, and open up the basic calculator calculator. So what you'll see is here, um, we have Microsoft is the, just defaulted in there. And um, let's let's put an Apple. All you have to do is type in the symbol of Apple and hit enter or go, and it's going to bring up the closing price. Um, today's, uh, this was after, after the close on October 1st, so yesterday. Um, Apple closed at the other day. So these are these are delayed prices. So this is for, this is a one day delayed prices. Okay. So Apple as of yesterday closed at $141.50. So what you'll see, this is an option calculator right here. This is the input section, this is the output section. All we want to do is all we want to do is figure out what's the price of the call option and what is the price of the put option. Okay? And they, the, the call and the put will be based off of the input levels here. Now, we talked about the six input levels. We have what's the, the current price of the stock, the strike price, the expiration date. Now, let's change this expiration date. Let's go down to, let's look at December, December expiration date, which is 77 days in the future. So the, what the model needs to know is how many days are, are until expiration. So even though we use this quick ca uh, calendar, it's the 77 number which gets factored into the into the formula and we have volatility of 28.58 that's a percentage that's 28.58 percent and here's your interest rates and here's the dividend amount 22 cents it just tells you this is all based on apple the next dividend date was august 6 they paid out 22 cents they paid out quarterly so you know some of this stuff is just all extraneous it, you don't need to know this for the formula but but i volatility gives you this information so you got one two three four five six six numbers here in the inputs that will spit out the number here so when we i changed the expiration date so let's hit calculate and the numbers over here change so an option calculator will, will quickly allow you to see what the value of the call and the put option is at any moment in time, okay? And using those six inputs. Now, anytime you change uh, one of these inputs, the option value will change as well. So we go back to the document, you can see um, option prices are not static. They, will, they fluctuate higher and lower throughout their life based on how all the inputs move each day. And market forces of supply and demand can also push option prices in, in a certain direction. If you have a lot of buyers that are trying to buy this one specific option contract, of course, the, the, the price is going to go up. Or if there, there are a lot of sellers of that specific option contract, the price will go down. But those six factors still are the biggest determinants of what um, how an option price um, is determined. So just imagine, you know, during the trading day, let's say, Apple's price goes up to $145. Now, once I hit calculate, 
Once I hit calculate, you're gonna see the call option value right here, the second box right here, call option value, put option value. When I hit calculate, you're gonna see these two boxes right here change. So let's hit calculate and you can see how they changed. All right, so anytime something changes, now let's move the, the days to expiration down to 40 days and we'll hit calculate and you'll see it once again, these numbers change, okay? So all throughout the day, the it's mostly the, the stock price that's changing because if you have 40 days until expiration, you know, not until you turn the calendar down to 39 days is, is, the, is the pricing really gonna change. So on an intraday basis, it's mostly the spr stock price that is the huge, the biggest factor. Now we can change the volatility. Let's say, you know, during the pandemic when volatility went up to let's say 100%, which is a huge, huge number. Uh, watch how these values are gonna change. You're gonna see both the call and the put option change. Now the stock price didn't change, it's the volatility that's changed. So let's hit calculate and you can see both values went up greatly. The stock price didn't move, but it's the volatility that moved the option price itself. When it's perceived that the stock's going to have a lot bigger range, higher, lower, that bumps up all the option prices, regardless of whether the stock price changes. So any, any one of these things change, it'll change the option prices. So that's really, you know, in a nutshell, what happens to option prices or how they're calculated. You have the inputs that goes into this formula. Behind the scenes, there's this Black-Scholes mathematical formula that, that's crunching these numbers, and it gives us the value of the call and the put. So anytime one of these inputs change, it's going to change these values. So in the end, it's really the stock price which is going to determine where the option will settle on expiration day. But until you get to expiration day, all these other things have a hand in how the option price moves. Okay, so if we go back to the document here, let's let's scroll down a little. Now, another thing that we like to do when we talk about option prices is we like to basically classify the strike price. You'll hear people say, oh, I'm buying an at-the-money call option or I'm selling an out-of-the-money put option. Well, what, what does that mean? And that's just, and there's three terms. There's at-the-money out of the money and in the money. And it all describes where the strike price lays in conjunction to where the current stock price is, okay? So to make things easy, what we the way to classify these things is if you have the stocks at $100 and you have a $100 strike price, that's, that's the same, right? If you have the stock price and the strike prices are the same, $100, they're considered at the money. It's at the money. The hundred dollars is the at the money price. So a call and put option uh, to be at the money, their strike prices is, is the same or roughly the same as the current stock price. So we look at the examples here. Um, let's go to the at the money. A call and put option whose strike price is similar to the current stock price is at the money. A hundred dollar strike stock price and a hundred dollar strike price is at the money. That's the same for both calls and puts. Now, the other is the out of the money and in the money, it's a little bit different. So a call option whose strike price is lower than the current stock price is what's called an in the money call option. So you have a $100 stock price, but the call option is a strike price of 90. That's called an in the money call option, okay? Now with a put option, a put option whose strike price is higher than the current stock price, that's an in the money put option. So if the stock price is 100, you have a $110 put option strike price, that's in the money. So it's good to know these different values. And now let's look at the at the money information. A call option strike price that's higher than the current stock price is an out of the money option. You got a $100 stock, $110 call option is out of the money. Now with puts, stock at 100, the put strike is 90. That's an out of the money put option. So these are, this is just some lingo, some terminology that's good to know. It, it doesn't tell you how the option price gets created. It's just telling you 
where it falls, where the strike price falls in conjunction to the stock price. So if we really want to go back to the option price, you know, the, the basic basis of this, this video today is, you know, how are option prices determined? It's really just these six factors and option prices are changing minute to minute, all based on where the stock is moving during the day. So if you're thinking that you're going to buy or sell an option contract and you think it's just going to, the price is going to stay the same throughout the life of it, then you need to understand that's not how it works. An option value fluctuates just like a stock price fluctuates. So, you know, that's that's really about it. So sometimes we want to get back to basics here. We want to understand what option prices are all about. And then once you understand how option prices work, you know, then you start getting into your strategies and you figure out, you know, how how the option prices move when you when you engage in this certain strategy. So it's just better to know things like if, like I said, if you're driving a car and you understand how the engine works and the brake works and all the fluids work and how the pistons work and everything else, the shock, shock absorbers work. The more you know about something, the more, you know, the more you can understand how it works. It's the same thing with options. As long as you, if you can understand all the moving parts, you can become a, a smarter trader. Now I wanted to show you going back to the eye volatility here. Um, we have this volatility number. Now, sometimes that can be confusing to people. The, st the current stock price, the strike price, and the day's expiration are widely known. The volatility is a little bit of a, of a, a different concept. It's, it could be confusing to some people. Volatility is just a measure of how erratic a stock has been over a certain period of time. Okay, It gets measured. That erraticness could, is measured and, and, and is turned into an actual number, and it gets put into the, the formula. And then in order to, what, what the option traders do is they, they take that historical information of where the stock has been and they project it into the future where they think the stock is going to be or how, it's, how the stock is going to move. We're not talking whether the stock's going higher or lower. We're talking about how erratic it's going to be. And that is what's called the volatility number. Now, you can also go to um, iVolatility.com and you can pull up their volatility information. If you type in here, type in um, Apple again, it'll bring up the volatility information. And I like to use this chart right here. This is a great handy little tool. It's the chart. This is a volatility chart. It tells you how erratic this, a stock has been over time. This is not a price chart of Apple. This is not telling you the price of Apple. This is telling you it's, histor it's, it's volatility levels and where the volatility of Apple has fluctuated over a period of one year's time. Now, we have two lines. We have a historical volatility is the blue line. That tells you, that measures the past movements of Apple. So where has Apple been? How has it fluctuated? The blue line measures its volatility, how erratic it's been. This green line is what's called the implied volatility measure. That's the option trader's best guess as to where or how volatile Apple will be in the future. And for the most part, both lines track each other, okay? So you can see volatility of Apple or the erraticness of Apple has gone down over time. This is going back to last October, 2020. Still things were pretty erratic. Stocks were moving higher and lower, large intraday ranges. That means it's been erratic. But as we've gone through the pandemic, and if you look at a chart of Apple, you will see Apple's trading ranges have gotten smaller and smaller over the last year or so. So that means its volatility or its range of pricing or its erratic erraticness has gone down. And you can we can quantify that by looking over here. Here's the percentages. So right now, the volatility of Apple is somewhere between you know 20 and 30 percent. So that we use 25 percent as as the mean average level, whereas back a year ago, it was you know close to fifty percent. It's 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 been halved. Uh, it's it's dropped in half over the last year. And then you take this twenty five percent number and you put it back into the calculator, twenty five percent, and we hit calculate, and you can see that um, what happened to the numbers here. Okay, so here's the values right there. All right, so. Um, Let's let let's just go to Microsoft and see what happens. And you, the eye volatility has its own measure of volatility, so they'll they'll default this number in here for you. 
the volatility number, but you can put any number you want in there. If you think, hey, you know what, that volatility is too low, I think the volatility should be more like 30%, put it in there and you'll see how the numbers change. Click calculate, so it changed a little bit. So it's up to you to decide what volatility level should be in this box. And you can let it default to what I volatility puts in there. They're pretty accurate. They have, you know, smart people there, um, but it's up to you. All right, so that's pretty much it on how option prices get their values, right? And all day long, the option prices change based on the stock price moving around and then, you know, the number of days to expiration. So if you, here's just some information for you to keep you more informed on how to become a smarter, and more profitable options trader. And you can use this information and use the volatility charts to help you gauge where things are. All right, well, you know, that's it for this short little lesson, about 20 minutes long. Um, let's go quickly to our website, smartoptionseller.com. You know we're big put option sellers. That's what we do. That's our bread and butter. If you don't know anything about put option selling, go to our website, download our free copy of Put Selling Basics. Go to our website here, click Put Selling Basics. You can put your name and email address right here. We'll send you a free copy, okay? Uh, what we do here at Smart Option Seller, we sell put options, we sell put option spreads. We're big option sellers. These are our two newsletters right here. And we also have our one-on-one -on -one coaching if you wanna engage with us or actually me. We sit down for an hour and we'll talk about options trading and, and, and teach you how to become a better options trader. So, all right, that's all for me today. I hope uh, this, this little video has been helpful to you. In this YouTube video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of the video. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Leave me a comment, send me an email, and I will always answer your questions. Can't give out personal investment advice, but I can certainly help answer questions about options trading. All right, so that's all for me today. Uh, I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.